Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to GMR Airports Infrastructures Limited conference call to discuss Q1 FY 2025 results. As a reminder, all participant line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. We have with us today Mr. Saurav Chavlia, Executive Director, Finance and Strategy, along with the other top management. Before we begin, I would like to say that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainty. Also, recording or transcribing of this call without prior permit permission of the management is strictly prohibited. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Saurav Chavla for the opening remark. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you and good evening, everyone. I welcome our shareholders, analysts, and other stakeholders to our quarter one fiscal 25 earnings call. This is a momentous moment for us because now our merger has got completed and this is the first earnings call of a merged entity, GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited. As we navigate into fiscal year 25, we are seeing a lot of optimism in the travel sector as also within the company. Various global institutions, including the World Bank, have stated that India will remain the fastest growing world's larger, largest economy. Even RBI has projected a GDP growth of 7.2% in fiscal year 25. One of the articles published by our by a business site said India's travel retail market is expected to grow at a CAGR of almost 21.6% during the period 2024 to 2029. To cater to the expected demand, the new civil aviation minister has assured that the build, pace of building aviation infrastructure, including creation of new airports, will be accelerated. The National Stock Exchange has also recently launched the Nifty Tourism India Index. GMR Airports is a part of that index with a weightage of 14.8% currently, the third highest within that portfolio. The focus area of all the stakeholders remains on establishing India as a hub. Let me give you some data points to ponder. More Indian passengers are booking non-stop flights than earlier. 57% of the total passengers in 2023 flew point to point compared to 53% in 2019 as per data from OAG. Data from Indian, India central bank show that Indian travelers reached a new peak in overseas spending of almost 31.7 billion in 2024. As of, of that, 17 billion was spent on international travel alone a 25% increase from the previous year. According to the CEO of the Sri Lankan Airlines, an increasing number of passengers from Europe to Sri Lanka are choosing to transit through Indian airports rather than the traditional West Asian hubs. Transit traffic from Europe to India to Colombo has tripled since COVID-19 pandemic. India is now the fastest growing long haul market for Melbourne Airport, its CEO said. Melbourne Airport has grown direct services to India in the last 12 months by 330%. However, even with the growth of direct connectivity to India, 70% of the traffic between India and Australia still goes through connecting hubs like Singapore. At Delhi Airport, we have launched several initiatives to aid international travelers. For instance, Air India has tie-ups with Delhi Airport to facilitate check-in for international passengers at two select Delhi metro stations, which is Shivaji Stadium and New Delhi Rajiv Chowk Stadium. To make immigration process easier, biometric kiosks are operational at Delhi airport. These and several other initiatives will ensure that more time is available to explore the airport and enhance the travel experience of the passengers. On that note, let me delve <clears throat> deeper into the Q1 fiscal 25 performance. Momentum in total income continued 
with Q1 fiscal 25 at INR 25.2 billion, which is up by 19% year on year, driven by traffic growth, translating into an EBITDA growth of 18% year on year to INR 10.2 billion. EBITDA margin for the quarter was 52% in quarter one fiscal year 25 versus 48% in Q4 fiscal 24. Higher finance costs and depreciation arising post completion of expansion of Delhi and Hyderabad airports lead to GMR airports reporting a loss from the continuing operations of rupees 3.4 billion. Consolidated net debt, excluding the FCCBs of 25.3 billion, stood at INR 280 billion, increasing by about 9 billion versus in Q4 fiscal 24. This was mainly driven by combination of borrowings raised at Bhogapuram Airport and payment of balanced capital expenditures at Delhi, partly offset by repayment of foreign currency notes at Hyderabad. On the operational front, we continue to see growth in traffic. That is 7% year-on-year growth in quarter one, reaching 31.8 million passengers. International passenger traffic share for the quarter was at 23%. Regarding specific airports during quarter one, passenger traffic at Delhi rose 7.7%, 7%, 7%, year-on-year to 19.3 million passengers. At Hyderabad, the traffic was up 10% year-on-year to about 6.8 million passengers. Both these airports handled the highest number of quarterly passengers ever in the quarter one. Goa traffic rose 19% year-on-year to 1.15 million passengers. Total income of Delhi airport rose 7.5% year-on-year to 12.9 billion rupees, driven by traffic growth with EBITDA up 3.8% year on year to about 3.9 billion rupees. At Hyderabad, total income was 5.8 billion rupees, up 21.4% year on year, with a growth driven by both traffic and slight increase in the aero tariffs for fiscal year 25. EBITDA was up 11% year on year to rupees 3.6 billion. Mopa, which is Goa Airport, reported a total income of rupees 946 million, an increase of 121% year on year on a lower base, strong traffic growth and new tariffs applicable from January 2024. The airport continues to report a positive EBITDA in its initial years of operation with Q1 at about 397 million rupees. <coughs> Notable achievements during the quarter are the merger of GMR Airports with GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited is now complete. Corporate structure of GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited is now streamlined and airport assets have moved closer to the GIL shareholders. <coughs> The enhanced corporate governance with an expanded board and a strong balance sheet has enabled GMR Airports Infrastructure Limited to be future ready. GMR promoters continue to remain as the single largest shareholder, retaining management control over GMR Airports Limited. Shares allotted to Group ADP in lieu of this merger are now trading on the stock exchanges. Delhi Airport during this quarter submitted the tariff proposal for the fourth control period, that is for a period from 1st April 2024 to 31st March 2029. In addition to this, there was an unfortunate incident at Terminal 1 at Delhi Airport. I would like to highlight that the swift response by Delhi teams ensured that the business operations had minimal impact on revenues and passengers do not face challenges. There was no shortage of staff to service the passengers and our concessionaires during this transition period. Progress of on foraying into airport adjacencies businesses continued. At Hyderabad Airport, 
all retail outlets are now being operated by Jima Airports Infrastructure Limited. Letter of intent has been issued to some luxury brands for luxury zone at the domestic terminal. Car park business that was awarded to Jima Airports Infrastructure Limited has been operationalized this month. For FNB, Jima Hospitality Limited has opened up five outlets during this quarter and is expected to open many more or actually more than 30 outlets during this quarter too. At Hyderabad Airport, a new last minute duty free shopping store has also been opened, which provides an additional facility for passengers to shop. Also, Transit Lounge commenced commercial operations in June of 24. At Goa Airport, duty free further strengthened its product portfolio by introducing watches and cosmetic categories. Rolling tobacco was also introduced at the arrival store. Car parking system has been operationalized in July 2024. I'm also happy to announce that as of July, 100% of physical work has been completed for the expansion of Delhi and Hyderabad, with operations at Delhi's new terminal stated to start shortly. As a matter of fact, as we speak, a release has already gone into the marketplace where uh, I think on, on right. 16th, right. 16th night, the, uh, the Terminal 1 will restart its operations. Okay. And the new Terminal 1. At Bogapuram, about 34% of physical progress is complete as of July, while at Mopa Goa, 91.5% of expansion is completed. At Crete, about 37.5% progress has been achieved as of July. All GMR airports are among the top 100 global airports as per, as per SkyTrack's ranking. Delhi retaining a rank of 36, and it is the only Indian airport in top 50. Hyderabad securing 61st position, and our newly operational Goa Airport getting 92nd position. SkyTrack awarded Delhi Airport with the best airport in India, and South Asia award for the sixth consecutive year while Hyderabad Airport was adjudged the best airport staff in India and South Asia. At GMR, we recognize that our success is deeply linked to the well-being of our planet and its people. That's why we are committed to integrating ESG principles into every aspect of our business. Our goal is to create a better future for all our stakeholders. ESQ score at both Delhi and Hyderabad airports was maintained at 5 for the quarter 1 and at Goa at 4.92. CSR spent for quarter 1 total about rupees 25 million with total beneficiaries of over 1,40,000 persons with more than 90% being from vulnerable and marginalized groups. Delhi, Hyderabad and Goa airports keep launching several initiatives and have received awards and recognitions for the same acknowledging the group's efforts on the ESC front. Both Delhi and Hyderabad airports are targeting net zero by 2030 and are rated at level four plus transition by ACI. With various initiatives on the ESC front, we have been making steady progress on ESG ratings by various agencies, including S&P Global, <coughs> MSCI, and Sustainalytics, etc. The presentation with all financial numbers are already available with you. If not, you can download it from the IR section of our website. We are available to respond to your questions on this call and offline after the call. Now I would like to open the forum for queries, which may be addressed by my colleagues from the corporate and business teams. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. 
Hi, sir. Uh, good, good evening, sir. And thanks for the opportunity. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. May I request you to please use your handset? I'm using handset. Is it better now? Can you come near to the mic and speak, please? Yes, yes. I am near the mic, sir. Hi. Yes, yeah, sir. sir. Uh, good evening, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. My question is, uh, given the merger has, I think, uh, materialized in the in this Q2, what is the total number of shares after the issuance to uh, issuance to to, uh, to Group A ADP, and uh, and am I supposed to conclude that the OCR, TAS, and FCCB everything has been issued to the issued to the Group A ADP? Is that a fair understanding? No, I think uh, there's some misunderstanding. The FCCBs that were issued to ADP, Group ADP, a little more than one year back, they continue to be FCCBs. Mm -hmm. So those have not been converted by FCC uh, by, by, by ADP. They will continue for a period of five years from the date of issuance, minimum period of five years from the date of issuance. So there's no conversion from that aspect, and hence the equity stack will not change. Mm -hmm. So, so, if, if you, so, so the so number of shares standing should be around uh, 10 billion, 10.5 billion shares, right? Uh, and uh, there is a 2.6 billion of OCRPS. Is my number correct? Correct. Yeah, understood, sir. So, my second question is on the on the on the uh, you you received TDSAT order a few few months back. Is the order still being contested, or has it achieved finality? <laughs> With regard to Delhi KD set orders? Yeah. No, the appeal has already been filed before the Supreme Court by the stakeholders. Uh, but uh, the court has not given any stake on it. So that the hearing is there to take place. And what are your expectation of the, uh, when do, will you receive the, receive the Delhi tariff order? Delhi tariff order, uh, we, we have filed application including the TD side benefits sorry, and also the Supreme Court benefit. Both together we have already filed application. My question is when do you expect the uh, Delhi tariff order to be in effect? Yeah, we the, are expecting yeah. because SBA CAPS has already been appointed for this purpose by the regulator. The work is going on full swing. Uh, regulator has already asked SBI to complete the entire work within six months. <coughs> so we are expecting the latest by December, otherwise the last quarter. So the order will be effective from 1st April 2024, while the order will come in, 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 uh, in the last quarter of uh, fiscal 24. Yes, yeah. fiscal 25. Fiscal 25, fiscal 25, yeah, sorry. Understood, sir. So, 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 okay. Understood. Sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karthik Chelappa from Endus Capital Advisors Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, am I audible? Sir, may I request you to please use your handset? Uh, yeah, is this uh, any better? Am I audible? No, sir. You're yeah, it's a little better, but please carry on. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. I just have two questions, one on Delhi Airport and one on Hyderabad. Uh, on Delhi, uh, if I were to look at our uh, financials this quarter, so we have about a 7% uh, passenger growth against which we've had at about 9 to 10% non-aero growth and, uh, and a 4% EBITDA growth. I'm just curious to see that our non-arrow revenue per pax is probably trending at about 2 to 3%, and our EBITDA per pax is actually down uh, year on year. Uh, what would explain this weakness, and when do you think we can start to see you know, some non-linearity in this growth, where you know, your uh, EBITDA is actually growing faster than revenue? That's my first question, sir. Just one second. Sure. Uh, uh, see, we are under base airport charges as far as the Delhi airport is concerned. So you will be able to see the benefit of increase in EBITDA only when the tariffs are implemented, which we are expecting by the last quarter of this fiscal year, FI25. 
okay the aero part of it is clear to me sir when i look at the non aero revenue uh, that per on a per pax basis is rising only 2 to 3% and that i think is also contributing some to the slow ebitda growth so i'm just trying to see when do you think the non aero revenue per pax can grow faster and which can probably translate into faster ebitda growth that's basically the angle that i'm coming from okay yeah i think that when you look at the non aero per pax uh, revenue what it takes into consideration is the inflationary impact as well as you know improved uh, uh, spend so uh, it it can vary anything between 3% upwards uh, or so uh, when you really look at this particular quarter's number it will have a combination of few things uh, q1 uh, is not the 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 best quarter q4 is a quarter where you have the maximum uh, revenue coming in both from the aero as well as non aero point of view and there could be other contributing factors like uh, spend in duty free and all that but uh, in isolation if you look at uh, 3% growth in non aero spend per pax is not a bad number i would like, like to say but you yeah we we have been doing better than that and that's the endeavor to by increased offerings and increased space you will you should see increasingly this this spend should go up yeah so i think you know you need to take into account the seasonality uh the first quarter of uh, of a fiscal year which is your april to june uh is usually lower than the last quarter of q4 of the previous uh, fiscal year so uh the momentum continues to be there i think uh, uh the real measure of it uh, will be as we go forward uh, you will see the trend lines reappear on the growth on the non aero side and another point is that terminal 1 which is now built for 40 million capacity is getting opened up now then you will see a real increase in non aeronautical revenue maybe in third quarter and fourth quarter <clears throat> okay thank you very much sir my second question is again on hyderabad what i notice is that we have had a very strong uh, aero revenue as well as non aero revenue uh so on a per pax basis that is also uh, for no, for aero it is almost a double digit and for non aero it's up about 7% odd on a per pax basis but despite that the ebitda is actually slower which means the opex is actually pretty high so what is contributing to the high opex to hyderabad and when do you think you can actually start to see ebitda growth also in the region of our revenue growth see in case of the hyderabad since the uh, expanded terminal is almost three times bigger than the existing terminal the costs are now started being incurred and uh, as far as the revenues are concerned aeronautical is of course in line with the tariffs which are already in place non aeronautical revenue now almost the all the new shops are getting opened up we are expecting the entire work will be completed by only third quarter of this financial year you will able to see a good jump in the non aerial revenue only in the fourth quarter <clears throat> okay got it uh, and just one follow up sir as far as the old terminal 1 was concerned which was being shut uh, what is the update on that when is that going to be opened and is there any repercussions to us in terms of additional capex or maintenance capex to be spent there is no maintenance capex the entire fallen the canopy has already been removed and the structure has been in place and uh, saurabh has already explained that we are starting the operations on 16th night with spice jet so entire operation of spice jet will be operated from terminal 1 from 17th august onwards and indigo is moving on 2nd or 3rd september to the terminal 1 so it will be working with the same capacity what it was working earlier however the full capacity of terminal 1 will be used maybe in the third or fourth quarter once we complete the canopy work so it will be a slow progression uh, of a full utilization of the space in that terminal which has been created but because of the fire work there will be a slight delay in that uh, expansion of uh, of a throughput through that airport basically we are operating only one uh, the check in island for the purpose of immediately starting the operations so we will open the old terminal pre check in islands over a period of time maybe by third quarter of this financial year and the traffic has not been impacted because when the when the event happened 
the traffic was moved to terminal two and terminal three. Now going forward, the traffic will start moving back from terminal two and terminal three back to terminal one. So from a, from a revenue perspective, uh, there will be no, there's no impact. Okay. Got it. This is very clear. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Wish you and the team all the very best for the remaining quarters. I'll come back in the queue for additional questions. If thank, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Kumar from Jeffrey's group. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. A uh, couple of questions. My first question is on uh, uh, on the merger part uh, of uh, Gal and Jill and like simplification of the structure so with group adp now coming directly as a uh, as a listed company shareholder does it change anything operationally for the for the business and how are they uh, particularly like sort of looking forward to or like sort of contributing to uh, travel retail opportunity development for the company so prateek honestly nothing has changed they were <coughs> they were at the they were 49% equity holder of GMI Airports, uh, which was a subsidiary of the list co. Now they have just, they're going to be 33% odd equity holder at the list co. Uh, they had same number of board seats as the GMI family had uh, at, the, at, the, at the private entity level. Uh, they will have the same board seats, uh, five, both for GMR family nominees and and uh, and uh, ADP, uh, they will have five nominees. So nothing has actually changed. It's a very smooth uh, migration of just shareholding uh, from a private entity level to a public entity level. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, the benefits are more from, you know, efficiency of, of, uh, of uh, movement of, uh, of earnings, uh, uh, you know, once once the entity starts or the airport entity start to declare dividend, uh, that will allow uh, the LISCO to receive the dividend in a more tax efficient form. Use that cash flows uh, for its uh, for its own balance sheet purposes and also for growth. Uh, if you look at the numbers, Pratik, uh, which uh, which for example, Hyderabad Airport is now started to throw. Uh, you know the free cash generation of Hyderabad is is very very robust, and uh, and uh, and uh, obviously uh, uh, you know when Hyderabad is not in an expansion mode, uh, they will be uh, they will be uh, you know uh, upstreaming uh, those cash to its uh, its shareholders. Uh, Delhi, you know once the new tariff order comes, we'll be able to give you much better guidance, uh, and uh, and but we are targeting. Uh, you know, free cash for equity generation in next three to four years at Delhi Airport. Also, it's such a large airport, uh, and once it starts to throw cash, it's it's big amounts of cash which is there. So the whole idea is now very much a balance sheet focused, um, operational focused generation of free cash for equity. Uh, you know, developing it into a a very strong platform for future opportunities that we may get as we go forward within India uh, and Asia, uh, you know, uh, uh, that is what our focus is. And uh, ADP, of course, brings its strengths in many aspects of airport uh, development and operations. And they, what they were adding as, as contribution at the GMI airports level, they are adding the same thing at the listed level, which is GMI airports infrastructure level. Thank you. Uh, next question is on uh, your debt, uh, like if at around 20, 280 billion rupees uh, as of first quarter, I think X of XCCB. Uh, um, how do you see like that uh, panning out with uh, the CAPEX, which is lined up for Bhogapuram Airport over the next 12 months? Bhogapuram Airport, now the construction is happening in full swing. And uh, as Saurabh has explained, we have almost touched 34% of the progress. In this current financial year, we are likely to spend about the 12 to 13 billion INR on the government. So our, uh, our 28,000 crore net debt could move to like what number? Is it like a peak number or is it that can move to like a 30,000 crore number? Total debt 
of the group. Uh, of course, Bogapuram debt as of today, what we have drawn is only about 700 crores. So, if the total debt to be uh, availed to be availed is 3,215 crores out of the 700 only drawn. So, another 2,500 crores will be added in, in the next two years. Two years. Correct. In the next two years. Obviously, uh, uh, the other airports will also be bearing down debt. Uh, there will be some uh, repayment. repayments of the principal that would be happening. Uh, so the net debt level, I think, uh, should peak in next uh, 12 to 18 months, and then it should start to fall. It to, to start to fall. Okay. And my question on uh, international opportunities, the competition, uh, like recently been, uh, like sort of uh, come across like bidding for two international airports in Kenya and Taiwan. So. What do you like guys think uh, from that perspective as a ADP consortium? No, I think you're referring to a couple of these airports likely to be given on a on a nomination basis to a particular competitor. So that's you know, I think it's part of the game. Uh, and when it comes to we focusing on uh, uh, the the opportunities right now, our focus is on on Middle East uh, and more so, you know, where you can look at the asset light uh, opportunities, like you would know we have submitted our bid for uh, Kuwait Airport Terminal 2. Likewise, we are also looking at uh, uh, ABHA in uh, Saudi. That's where we have submitted our uh, request for qualification. So, uh, whilst there's a, there's a large landscape and competition, yes, competition is there and competition will remain there. So, we'll not, we'll not, uh, Take too much of uh, what has gone to somebody on a nomination basis. That's part of the game, I would say. So, Prati, I, I think I will again allude to something I just stated earlier. We have enough on our plates. <clears throat> you know, we have uh, today almost uh, 100 million passenger throughput in our airports, both domestic and international. And if they are growing at about 10 to 15 percent every year, uh, we are adding. Uh, one or maybe two medium-sized airports in our portfolio. Uh, so our focus is more on our PNL, more on cash flow generation, and and if within that focus we do get an opportunity which makes a compelling economic sense for our shareholders, we will surely not let it go a begging. We will bid for those, but even if it doesn't come. For us, we are already adding two airports in our portfolio on an annual basis. That's the way we look at it. Uh, sorry, can you elaborate on this RFQs in Kuwait and Saudi? Uh, this is related to what asset light contract? So uh, this Kuwait terminal to uh, I know where we have uh, as GMI infrastructure, we have uh, put in our bid. So there are three bidders. We are awaiting the results. Uh, that's a uh, asset light uh, bid. Uh, for 10 years uh, operations and management contract. So, and there are two other bidders. So that's, that's on uh, Kuwait. Saudi, uh, we have submitted our uh, qualification and the next process will, will take place as we go along in terms of RFP. Right, still it's in the early days, but these are the two places right now we are putting our focus on. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ganesham from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Um, thank you. Are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. great, great. Pratik's already asked uh, some of my questions, but maybe if I could just uh, post one on the CapEx and then just get back to the debt. On the CapEx, uh, okay, Hyderabad, Delhi, mostly done. And on Goa, I remember you mentioning about 200 crores in the last quarter. Now, I'm just trying to see more on the Bogapuram side of things, right? So we've done about 34, 35% and we're expecting 12 to 13 billion at the year end, right? So if you could just tell us, is this CapEx more of a front-loaded nature or um, how is it going to be how split across the you know timeline of the project? So that's probably the first question. And then given the number of subsidies and airports that we have, right? So what would sort of be the maintenance CapEx on these assets once this airport expansion takes place? 
as far as the Boga Parma is concerned, uh, we are drawing the debt as and when required only. We have already infused 811 crore rupees of equity. Mm. So, uh, we have uh, 800 crores equity is already infused and uh, 700 crores only drawn. So, we have been drawing a very less amount as and when required only. It is not front loaded. It is only spread over a period of two years. Got it. And and just uh, on where you expect the maintenance capex to be on these assets once they're fully uh, fully commissioned? These are all, uh, see, the expansion has been completed. So we have hardly have any operational capex. It will be normally, uh, uh, operational capex will be in the range of about 1.5 to 2 billion rupees in case of Delhi and around 1, 1.5 1 billion in case of Hyderabad. Okay. Um, that is very clear. Now you did mention that you're expecting that I mean debt to sort of peak out in the next 12 to 18 months, and and your focus on the PNL and cash flows, I'm pretty sure is uh, very well appreciated. Um, so I uh, just wanted to pass that feedback, um, and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Saurav Chagla for closing comments. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining this uh, first merged entity quarter earning call. Um, you know, the team is available uh, to answer any further queries you may have, uh, and uh, you can reach them either on mobile or by email. We're happy to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, answer any 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 further questions you may have. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful Independence Day, to, uh, Independence Day tomorrow. Thank you. On behalf of JM Airports Infrastructure Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.